Hey yo, Speak Music Radio and I Speak TV. This is your boy Chris Conscious. I'm just that dude. I'm sitting here at uh, the, um, what is this? Purpose. It's the Flame Concert. <laughs> it was the Flame Concert, man. Look, this is the Clear Sight. This is the Clear Sight crew. They brought fire. I mean, it's hot in here. I'm still sweating. You know, that's why I got my hat on because I got a lot, you know, my kind of big and everything. But. I just want to say, man, these people about fire, about the fire of God. Yeah, good time. People, man, we had a good time. What that I just wanted to say, man, mm -hmm. I knew that God blessed this yeah. this concert because even before you guys got on, somebody yeah. was just outside getting saved. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. That's what y'all saw when y'all yeah, was getting saved. That's crazy, man. But uh, yeah, so let's get on with these questions. I'm gonna say it like this <laughs> to all you guys: what what made you first realize you wanted to pursue music as a ministry? Yeah. yeah. I think for me, first, it was the way music impacted me. So I grew up, music just had a certain emotion and a certain type of connection that no other experience could give me. Not school, not friendship, not preaching, not movies. No other format could give you what music does. So just experiencing music myself made me want to give that back to people. So I started writing music in fifth grade because I wanted to give that back, you know, and then eventually, when God got a hold of me uh, through Christ, I'm like, now I got this newfound love, this newfound joy, but I still like music. Let me bring them together so that I can still perpetuate that same experience. So that's what it's been for me. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, for me, it was uh, just starting out. It was fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was dope. I love rapping, um, getting creative on the microphone, coming up with hooks and, and verses, and I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, just got saved. I met Jesus and he just rocked me. Yeah. But what made me pursue it as a ministry, I wrestled with that. When I first started doing Christian rap, I still didn't know if I really wanted to, to do it. I didn't know if my motives was right or whatever, but basically I had a, a, a drug dealer came up to me and he got a hold of my CD from a crackhead to sum up the story. He got my CD from an addict in exchange for crack. And he listened to it for two weeks straight, came to a church, got baptized, Quit selling dope. And when I heard the story from him, his eyes, he was just mean looking dude. He was just crying. When I heard that, I was like, okay. I was like, I'm gonna I'm do it. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Well, I um, I actually started singing when I was six in church. And um, I God told me when I was six that this is what I would be doing. And so I remember running and telling my mom, you know, mom, I'm gonna be a singer, I'm gonna make an album. And um, I knew that I was talented. Um, like most of my life and started writing music for God and stuff like that. But it wasn't until I really accepted Christ into my heart. I was 16 and I was in a service and my mom asked me to come up and worship. And I was so scared because, you know, it was different than what I usually did. And as soon as I just lifted my hands and began to sing, it was just like the Holy Spirit just convicted me. And I really, you know, that's when I realized that God gave me this gift for him and not for myself, so I could be talented or I could get the glory, but that and that he gave me this gift so that other people can be saved and minister to. And I just remember everything changing from then on. Awesome. And you know, now, I mean, look at what we get to do, it's amazing, yeah. so. Okay, considering that you guys have this, this great call to music, you know, mm -hmm. it feels good to be amongst musicians because yeah, there's yeah. room where, you know, I'm a I'm a gospel rapper too, so yeah, guys, you know, know this yeah. this is this is my side job. No, <laughs> no this is my real job. But, you know, <laughs> it all coincides. Absolutely. But um, I know that when I was coming up being a musician, you yeah. know, I was always just told you're playing in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I pursued music as a career, I went yeah. to school for music. I got my degree mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, you know, I had you know people in my family saying, "What are you gonna do with that?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so. What would you say was your biggest challenge mm -hmm. in pursuing music? Yeah. I think I came up in an era where Christian rap was still taboo amongst mm -hmm. our main audience uh, of supporters. And uh, so it was, it was strange that a lot of people in the church didn't support it. It was understandable because we grew up in a, in a community that I grew up in, people saw the onslaught that hip hop brought to the hood. The negative effects. So all hip hop isn't bad, but there are aspects of it that ramshack the hood. So then the gatekeepers of the church, they know what that did to their their sons and their nephews and their nieces and their daughters. So they didn't want anything to do with it. They like keep that hip hop madness away from us, you know. So I came up in that era. So that was probably one of the biggest challenges was showing them 
man, we really care about people and we really just using this music as a tool to connect with people on a level that probably this won't, you know what I mean? So it was really an opportunity for me to just kind of plow away at making that, you know, a staple thing in the church. So that was one of the biggest challenges. Lee. Oh, um, for me, you know, I think it was just trusting God. It's It was hard, you know, as I got older and, um, you know, people start to say, okay, well, is this really going to work for you or you need to, you know, think about other things. And, um, and for me, the things God was telling me to do seemed, seemed crazy. You know, work on my album, don't do any concerts, don't, you know, reach out or do anything, but just work on your album. And, um, you know, I remember people, you know, telling me, why aren't you doing anything? You know, you're falling off the map, stuff like that. And um, I was just like, I gotta believe God. I gotta trust God that this is what he told me to do. And it was right around, you know, a month before we finished actually producing and writing my album that God sent clear sight and our, my album was ready to go, you know? And um, it was just amazing to see God yeah you know, really come through, like you said, and to prove everybody wrong. Mm -hmm. And so now it's even, you know, a challenge now to continue to trust him when he says things that just kind of seem crazy or don't make sense. But I, you know, I have that past experience to, to know that what he says, he, he's going to come through and do it. So mm -hmm. just having faith still. <laughs> yeah. I, had a, I had a crazy, because I was in college. You know, I, I was in college the past like, five years working on two degrees. Like, business stuff um, and I was doing music so all I did was college music I didn't have a job and at one point I was living in my studio just making music uh, traveling locally doing stuff and my friends was looking at me kind of weird like you know you need to get a job you know you need to have your business but I just I was okay I was content with being poor and, and doing ministry and uh, when God opened up the door to travel and tour and flame and do ministry. Like V said, it just, all the naysayers were just hushed, like, like wow, like God was with this boy, <laughs> and we don't know what he might do now. Yeah. Okay, I got a follow-up question. So you guys pursue this meeting, mm -hmm. and it seems like you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Was there, at, was there, at any point in your career, was there a time where doing music for the world mm -hmm. was more alluring than what you're doing now? Uh, let me see. Uh, more than, I don't think, probably, I probably wouldn't say in comparison to that it was more alluring then because I think now it's just a different experience. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, a greater joy. Like, it's crazy because we just had a chance to, uh, I ain't gonna say the person's name, but we was kicking it with some famous person. If I say his name, everybody in the world would know who he is. <laughs> And um, so every so when we were with this person and, and people saw him, they just lost their minds. Like, oh my God, it's him. And they wanted to take pictures and get hugs and stuff like that. And uh, V Rose was with me. And they didn't necessarily know who we were all the time, but they knew who he was. So they were super excited, but it was crazy because we were thinking like, man, like what we do, it's, it's a different type of joy. Because when people would come up to us, the comments were different. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be like, oh, I love what you do. It's so fun and so, it would be that, but it would also be for us like, man, you guys changed my life. Yeah. I heard this song and it helped me understand what God wants from me. It would be these yeah. deep, soul-turning comments, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's, right. it's, so the allure to do it for God is that much more greater because it has value for now and for eternity. But then the other allure was real too, you know what I mean? But it just was short-lived and didn't give you that lasting joy, you know what yeah. I mean? That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Yeah. For me, it was it was interesting because you know I was 15 years old, 16, and I was true. I was actually touring, doing secular music, you know, mm -hmm. traveling different states, uh, and it was all I wanted. All I wanted was to be famous and make money, chase women, all of that, the whole lifestyle, smoking weed, getting drunk, partying, and that was my. I just wanted it, mm -hmm. and. When I when God convicted my heart to, to quit rapping, it was a battle. Like it was a serious war going on in my body. And I remember one night I was in California, I was in uh, LA, 
and I was sitting on the beach, mm-hmm. and my manager it took me to Beverly Hills. She was showing me the house. It was like, this could be yours. It was kind of like Satan took me to the mountaintop. It was like, I'll give you this. Mm-hmm. And we were riding around downtown LA, and you know, you're seeing the Ferraris and the, the nice cars. And you're like, man, this is tight. This is dope. But as the week went on, it's like everybody had money, and it was kind of like, this would get boring eventually if everybody out here got money. It don't really mean nothing. But um, I remember sitting on the beach and I was praying to God and I was like, God, I can't, I can't walk away from this. Like my heart wanted it. And I was like, God, I can't. Like this is all I ever wanted. It's finally about to happen. I can't walk away. And I told God straight up, like, I'm sorry. But I said, I said, but if you do this through me, if you do it for me, like take me away, like work it in me to walk away from this. And uh, and I'll I'll leave it alone. And I went back to the hotel because I was in a group. So I got two other guys looking at me like, hey, it's time to eat. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, when I told them, like, I was sitting on the hotel bed and I was just crying. I was like, man, I, I can't do it. I can't do it no more. And they were like, what? <laughs> like, now you quit right now? <laughs> they was mad. Yeah, I believe You know, my one homie was like, you're. My other homie was like, I feel you. Because I'm kind of dealing with the same issues in my heart and uh crazy so when i walked away it was, it was jesus like jesus worked it in my soul to desire him more than the world and now i look back and i'm he just he he gave me so much more than what i would have had already so i'm so satisfied to be doing this for him right now. it's amazing how powerful god's glory is oh yeah you know no matter